They say everything's bigger in Texas, but in Australia, everything's deadlier, especially the nature. Australia is home to an outrageously disproportionate number of animals that can absolutely delete you off the face of the earth, ranking among the top three countries for venomous species. But if you're only counting creatures whose venom is fatal to humans, Australia takes the crown. It's home to 20 of the 25 most venomous snakes on earth, including every single one of the top 11. Then there's the cassowary, one of the only birds on the planet known to kill humans from time to time. And of course, you've got the old legends, saltwater crocodiles, great white sharks, spiders and jellyfish with venom that can shut your body down in minutes. Need more proof that Australia is the land of nope. It's home to some of the largest insects on earth. It's one of the few places where pine cones can actually kill you. And it's where the three largest wildfires of the 21st century happened. And as wild as that all sounds, prehistoric Australia made modern day Australia look like a petting zoo. We're not just talking about dinosaurs either. Long after them, around 50,000 years ago, right when humans showed up, Australia reached peak nightmare mode. Back then, reptiles, not mammals, ruled the land. One of the worst things you could have run into was the Kinkana, a land-walking crocodile. Not a look-alike, a legit crocodilian that ran on land with ease. Kinkana looked a lot like today's crocs, but with one huge difference. It had long legs that kept its body high off the ground and possibly let it sprint. That alone would ruin your day but add in a flat tail built for walking, not swimming, and hoof-like toes, and you've got yourself a crocodile designed to chase you down, not wait for you in the river. Adults usually hit about 10 feet long and 440 pounds, similar to a mid-sized American alligator, but larger ones could reach up to 20 feet. At that size, it could absolutely take down large mammals and occasionally humans. Its weapon of choice? Xiphodont teeth, serrated, blade-like fangs, similar to what you'd find in theropod dinosaurs. These weren't for crushing, they were for slicing flesh into ribbons. Even jumping in the water might not have saved you, because some evidence suggests the Kinkana could swim too. A sprinting land croc with dino teeth that might also be a decent swimmer? Welcome to Australia. And the Quincana wasn't even the worst of it. That title might go to Megalania, now technically called Varanus Priscus, a giant monitor lizard that dwarfed anything you've seen outside a sci-fi movie. Even conservative estimates peg it at 11 feet long and 350 pounds. Basically, a sea lion sized lizard. But that's just the floor. Upper end estimates, over 26 feet long, with a weight close to two tons, heavier than eight Komodo dragons taped together. Like its living relatives, it had razor sharp, recurved teeth perfect for gripping flesh, powerful limbs with hooked claws and possibly venom glands. That venom worked like a slow death sentence, preventing blood from clotting and allowing wounds to stay open and infected. Just like a Komodo dragon, Megalania may have bitten prey, backed off, and waited for venom and blood loss to finish the job. Even if you escaped the attack, you'd still be screwed. Think you'd be safer with snakes? Think again. Enter Wanambi an extinct serpent that lived alongside Megalania and Quincana. It was part of the Madsoidae family, known for producing absolute units of snakes with huge bodies and relatively stiff jaws. Wanambi reached up to 20 feet long, rivaling today's Burmese pythons. Unlike many Aussie beasts, it wasn't venomous, but it didn't need to be. It likely hunted by ambushing prey near water, 
then coiling its powerful body around them and squeezing until blood couldn't reach their heart or brain. And here's the twist. Its inflexible jaw meant it couldn't swallow prey whole. So instead, it ripped them apart using its sharp teeth and raw muscle power to disembowel and tear off chunks of flesh. Pleasant. Some studies even show that in certain indigenous populations, constrictor attacks are still a common cause of death, which suggests these snakes were more than just theoretical threats. If you're wondering how mammals survived this reptilian hellscape, the answer is, they didn't sit back and take it. Meet Thylacolio, aka the marsupial lion. Despite being a close relative of the koala, this thing was a lethal predator. Adults were about the size of a wild boar, with the largest specimens rivaling female lions or tigers. Thylacolio didn't just bite hard. It had the strongest pound-for-pound -pound bite of any mammal that's ever lived. A mid-sized one could bite with more force than a lion, two and a half times its size. Its teeth weren't just strong, they were uniquely brutal. Large incisors for stabbing and flat, blade-like premolars that sliced through arteries, windpipes, and spinal cords in seconds. It killed prey faster than an African lion in under a minute. And it didn't stop there. Each front paw had a huge retractable claw attached to a semi-opposable fung, giving it deadly manual dexterity. These claws were hooked too, perfect for climbing and possibly dragging prey into trees. Some paleontologists even think it stocked cave systems. Even the herbivores in prehistoric Australia were on beast mode. Case in point, Diprotodon, a prehistoric cousin of the wombat that grew to elephant size. No exaggeration, this thing could weigh up to 3.85 tons, just like a full-grown Asian elephant. Though plant-eating, it had a bite force of 11,000 newtons, strong enough to snap a human femur clean in half. Hunting it was more than dangerous, it was stupid. Then there were the Genyornis, part of the Thunderbird family. These flightless birds stood over six and a half feet tall and weighed over 500 pounds. Think of an ostrich, then put it on about a gallon of steroids and give it a bad attitude. They looked terrifying, and though herbivorous, they could still defend themselves. With huge beaks and talons, they had no problem backing down predators that got too bold. By now, it should be abundantly clear, prehistoric Australia was the last place on Earth you'd want to find yourself. And keep in mind, most of Australia's modern-day death machines were already alive back then. Plus, even more extinct terrors we haven't touched on. Giant turtles, additional crocodilians like Polymnarchus, and brutal droughts ravaging the land. And yet, humans survived not only survived, they thrived. Early humans didn't just navigate this nightmarish ecosystem, they hunted some of the megafauna mentioned here. Which begs the question, maybe we weren't just survivors. Maybe we were actually the scariest species of them all. Thanks for watching. Until next time, on Beasts Beneath Time.